Hi folks, this is all the fruit and I'm in the Botanic Garden of Florence, Italy. Well, it is one of the oldest botanic gardens in the world and the greenhouse is also quite old. It's not just as old as the garden, but it's still from the 19th century. Here is the cold greenhouse. What is a cold greenhouse? It's basically a greenhouse which you don't heat. So whenever it's hot outside, the greenhouse is hot. Whenever it's cold outside, the greenhouse is cool. Yeah, you can basically cultivate, let's say, subtropical plants in such a greenhouse. It would usually remain frost-free in most climates, but uh, not reliably so. Well, Florence is part of the Mediterranean, so why do they have a cold greenhouse? Uh, greenhouse for subtropical plants. Well, Florence is part of Tuscany. Theoretically, Tuscany is part of the Mediterranean, but for me it's a little bit too, too cool. The climate is a little bit too harsh to be properly considered part of the Mediterranean. And the historical significance of such greenhouses is quite, yeah, quite significant. Even since the Middle Ages and more during the Renaissance, People in rich Italian cities with harsh climate wanted to have all this Mediterranean and subtropical plant diversity they could see at the coast. Cities like Florence or Milano or Torino, which were big uh, economic and political centers, but had unfortunately quite a harsh climate, tried to grow all those subtropical plants you could grow without problems on the coasts of southern Italy and even in some parts of in some coastal parts of northern Italy. So those greenhouses have a very old tradition in Italy. This one, as I say, is from the 19th century. Let's see what plants do they think they cannot grow outdoors but needs to grow indoors in this Mediterranean to sub-Mediterranean climate. Well, first they have a huge collection of cicadaceae. They also have some growing outdoors. There are some which can survive the winters of Florence. But as you see, they don't trust the winters too much. Dozens and dozens of huge plants are here. A couple are growing in the ground. Most of them are growing in pots because they are taking them outdoors in summer. We're in the beginning of May and they are still they still haven't taken most of them out, so I guess they are up to something. Maybe they know that even in the first half of May they can be quite harsh frost here in Tuscany. Well, definitely not a definitely not a subtropical climate and in my opinion not really a Mediterranean one. So a nice big collection of sucas and Dion and Samia and all those other uh, Sucadaceae and uh, Sucadaeti plants. Here a small collection of Strelitzias. Yeah, I, I wouldn't plant those outdoors around here. You can plant them outdoors even in northern Italy, in coastal areas of Liguria. Maybe you could even plant them in coastal areas of Tuscany. Tuscany is uh, south of Liguria, but because its coasts are less protected, um, basically, the coasts of Liguria have a much milder climate. It's actually one of the northern most truly subtropical areas in the world. But here in Firenze, no. I would just call it sub-Mediterranean. Well, of course, all those Sucadaceae were not the main focus of those uh, centuries-old uh, ancient greenhouses. The main focus were always the citrus fruit. That's why the old name for greenhouse is Orangerie. That's the place where you grow your oranges if your climate is too harsh. And they have a collection of citrus here. Basically every botanic garden and every plant collection and every big villa and big park in Italy cannot do without all those citruses. Yeah, in coastal areas, in most coastal areas of Italy, they will grow most of them outdoors, or even all of them outdoors. But not here, folks, not here. Nice big citrus collection. What is this? Some calamansi. 
Sam citron, citros medica aroma. This looks like a lime or a lemon. Ponceros trifoliata. This would grow very well outdoors uh, here. It would grow very well outdoors even in colder areas. This seems to be some, yes, citros aurantium corniculata. Lots of nice citruses. It's it's not a very big collection. The very big uh, collection of the the very big citrus collection of the Medici is in another garden, which I hope to visit soon. Here are a lot of other stuff, which is yeah. With some of them, I I wonder if they couldn't grow them outdoors. The Aloysia over there, they could probably grow it outdoors. What is this? Is this an acacia? No, this is some Sigophilaceae. Uh, I wonder if they could grow the Agatis outdoors. Beautiful plants. They even have some big conifers in here. Here you can see the construction of the greenhouse in the 19th century. Of course, glass was quite expensive. And so I guess this is the northern side. Yeah, this is more or less the north, exactly. This is from where I enter. There is no glass on the north, even no glass on the northern side of the, of the ceiling. The southern part of the ceiling is with glass. Here the, the southern wall has a lot of big windows, but it's not completely made of glass. I don't even know if they had those metal frames in the 19th century. I guess they could have made them out of wood. So quite an ingenious construction if you want to build a greenhouse and not to spend too much money on glass. Huh, here there is some tobacco growing. I wonder if they use it or only grow it as an ornamental. A lot more citruses. Well, the citrus season is almost over, so you can see that most plants don't even have fruits. But they seem to have like close to a hundred different citruses here. Here another nice huge citron. They have a palm collection, which is quite interesting. What do they grow indoors? Well, this Chameropsumilis humilis, it grows outdoors here in Florence. This is the uh, this is the bluish variety. This seems to be closer. Oh no, this is Trinex campestris. Sorry, but also this one they could also grow outdoors. Phoenix rupicola. No, this is more tropical. Uh, Phoenix SP, probably Tomentosa, I don't know this one. Phoenix Reclinata, well, I have seen it grown in Southern Europe, but here I guess it's too cold for it. There is Phoenix Canariensis growing outdoors. I don't know, I would even try Phoenix Dactylifer outdoors, but as you can see, they have a big Phoenix Theophrasti, Phoenix Silvestris. They have a big uh, date palm collection here, and they don't, they are growing them outdoors. They keep them indoors all winter. Also, their collection of gingers is mostly being grown indoors. Well, this carob tree could grow outdoors. I saw one of a decent size growing outdoors. Le piante carnivore. Well, where are the carnivorous plants? I don't see a single one here. Back there, a collection of... Um, no. Pineapple relatives, what what they called again, bromeliaceae. Here are a lot of nice little shrubs. Forgot the name of this one, but I think it has green flowers. A lot more palms. This is, of course, not the best place uh, to grow palms in Italy. It's much easier to grow palms or cacti outdoors in Italy, but yeah. You work with what you have, and here in this climate, they still manage to amass a nice collection. At least they don't have to heat them. Lily pillies, even the lily pillies are grown indoors. I wonder, I, I think, I almost think this could survive here outdoors. What do you think, folks? Well, so this is the ancient greenhouse of the Botanic Garden of Florence. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful city of Florence. And of course, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe.